Kawhi's CA99 piano has been hailed by many as one of those rare perfect products where function, form, and value seemed in total lockstep. The new actions were better, the new tone engine delivered unfiltered high resolution multi-channel recording, and the soundboard transducers were tighter and clearer. So I honestly didn't think the CA99 had much more to give. Short of more speakers or a completely different action, none of which made any sense since Kawhi's already offering all of that in the Novus line, I just had no idea how or why they'd touch the 99 with a 10 foot pole. So as the last CA99s are being sold off of dealer floors around the world, let's see if the CA901 is a major upgrade or simply a relabeled 99 which may not actually be a bad thing. Today, we're gonna to compare the sonic experience, the action, the headphone experience, Bluetooth audio quality, interface use, and the cabinetry, and answer the question of whether Kawhi did the impossible and improved basically a perfect product, or worst case, move the needle back. Let's find out. Now when it comes to sound, there are several aspects here that we need to cover. Let's first talk about the tone engine itself. Both of these instruments use the newest versions of the Harmonic Imaging XL with the rendering engine, but the new CA901 has the Competition SKEX loaded up on it. Otherwise known really as the second generation Shigeru Kawai 9 foot concert grand. Any other patch differences are very, very minor or non-existent. Now with other Kawai products that have had this new SKEX competition loaded on it, the difference has been notable and enjoyable. We'll see if we notice the same thing here. Beyond that though, there are some other really significant differences on paper between these two instruments. The speaker configuration is vastly changed. Not only that, but we believe that the supplier of the speakers has also been changed as well as some of the circuitry. This is of course the post Onkyo era. So on the CA99, we actually had four upward facing speakers that were all the same size and that was providing the majority of your mids and some of your high frequencies. Then at the front, you had the two tweeters that were uh, providing some of that detail from the mechanical secondary tones such as the dampers coming off and on the strings or the duplex scaling, things like that. And after that, virtually all of the low end and low mid range tone was coming off the soundboard. Over on the CA901, you now just have two speakers that are facing upward and those are different sized plus with 360 diffusers. The other two speakers that were normally on the top of the 99 have been relocated to being front facing speakers and your two tweeters are still located in the same place. The other thing I noticed is that the tone ports underneath the keys on the 901 is very different than what they've done on the 99. On the 99, there was one long slot that ran along the entire width of the instrument, whereas over on the 901, they actually have multiple notch slots stretching the entire width of the instrument. I have to imagine that this hadn't been done for structural reasons, but rather for sonic or acoustic reasons. Let's now quickly compare the sound between these two instruments using exactly the same patch and exactly the same tone settings. Now to give you this sound, we're taking both line out, but we also have right above us two Rode NT5 microphones, which are placed just above my head equidistant between these two instruments. So let's first start on the CA99. Okay, so this is on the SK uh, EX Concert Grand, so it's the original sample. It's, uh, we are three notches down from the top volume, and so it's got a bit of a brassy uh, presentation out front. Very clear and no harshness in the, in the super high end. But definitely kind of a pronounced um, upper mid range. Lots of kind of cabinet resonance and rumble coming off the soundboard in the very low end. Now let's hear how the 901 compares. As I said, same settings.
Hard to say whether this is a result of the speaker reconfiguration or some kind of a fundamental system EQ, um, but the character of the sound is like very different. That kind of upper mid brassiness on the 99. Just completely gone here. When I first did the 901 deep dive, uh, I think I made the comment that the gap in speaker presentation or the sonic experience of playing the 901 versus, say, the NV5S had really shrunk uh, compared to some of the previous CA iterations uh, versus what they were doing with the Novus. And yeah, I'm really hearing it now, especially when we've got the side by side. Now in the lower end, what I notice is that the bass is a lot less boomy, it's, a, it's more tight, and I'm getting less cabinet resonance uh, from the piano. Now, let's switch to the competition. Now I've said this in other videos, the competition brings a little more um, of the mid tones, some of those lower partials, second partial, third partial kind of thing, a little more prominently than the original sample. Um, a lot of that's due to the extra maple in the rim of the piano that this is sampled off. Also in the top, the attack of those treble notes are just a little thicker. I like how they did the duplex on the newer versions of the Shigurus versus the originals. Just slightly thinner and a little more glassy. So the other thing I'm noticing is that I really like how they've placed these speakers in terms of giving me the detail and a slightly better balance of that upper mid-range tone. Your impression of the sound stage on a 901 is dramatically better than the 99. So I've talked about this on the Novus videos where you can close your eyes and really visualize yourself in front of a piano with all of the detail coming from left and right and hearing the hammer striking the string and being able and having that be so precisely presented that your brain can actually uh, visualize what's going on. And that's kind of a very crude description of you know, uh, what people describe as the sound stage. And over here, so much of the treble and the details being dispersed into the room before it's hitting your ear that you, you really do lose that. Or certainly in comparison, you know, these pianos keep evolving and so the first time I was in front of the CA99 compared to the 98, I was blown away. Now let's move on to action. On paper, there should be literally no difference between these two, but as we know, Something as subtle as even just changing how the action is supported underneath can change your impression of the feel. So let's find out what we've got. difference I'm hearing is I actually hear a little bit more or I feel more of the piano coming through the keys here. I don't know if that was a desired effect by Kawhi, but I do know that other manufacturers such as Roland have started implementing haptic 
uh, key sensation in their top model, the GP9. This very well could be something intentional. Other than that, the key surfaces remain the same, the black keys, the white keys, uh, the weighting, uh, the key length, even the repetition speed feels totally consistent between these two. Now the other thing I'd really like to check out is whether there's a difference in the headphone experience now that we're dealing with slightly different circuitry. First the CA99. and over to the 901. Only difference I'm noticing there is because they did change suppliers for the discrete headphone amplifier, the headphone volume out of the 99 tends to be slightly louder than what you get out of the 901 given the same settings. When it comes to the user interface, there's a couple of important changes here. They've gone with a low glare cover to the touchscreen, but it also appears that they've improved the resolution of the touchscreen as well, because some of the slide outs and some of the menus just look a little more crisp and a little more high resolution than what you were getting on the CA99. The responsiveness and the, and the refresh rate also seems to be improved slightly. Now the last difference we're going to focus on here is the Bluetooth audio, which isn't something that we usually uh, touch on more than simply addressing whether it's there or not. But in this case, because the speaker quality in the speaker system is so high that I imagine a lot of people are using this as a stereo as well as an instrument, I think it's worth addressing, especially since the Bluetooth version that the CA901 comes out with is now up to 5.1. I believe uh, the CA99 would have still been using a four point something version of the Bluetooth audio. So there could be an improvement in fidelity here, uh, but in combination with that, um, with the reconfigured speaker system, let's find out what we get. Okay, so I've got my phone as the audio source and we are going to Bluetooth into first the CA99, then the 901, again, identical settings, and let's just hear the difference. There's actually a striking difference between these two and I hope that the microphones were picking some of that up. The bass on the 901 is more prominent and definitely more tight and it feels like there's a better separation between your lower bass tones and your mids and your highs. The mid-range frequencies on the CA99 are definitely more prominent when you're listening to Bluetooth which is consistent with the playing experience itself. We were talking about the fact that sort of those mids and upper mids were a lot more prominent but there's much less bass definition on the 99 when you're comparing it to the 901. It sort of feels like the bass just disappears a little bit into the back and you've got quite a bit of washiness occurring uh, kind of right through your lower mids into your upper mids. Uh, the treble in both cases uh, sounds nice and clear, um, but it just sounds like there's better separation and better definition kind of in, in all frequency ranges on the CA90, uh, CA901 rather. So there you have it. Far from just simply a warmed up CA99, they actually did take an instrument that already had universal acclaim and have made this even better. Really closing the auditory gap between it and the Novus 5. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Stu Harrison, and we'll see you again soon.